I have many responsibilities in my life. Husband, homeowner, I have two dogs to keep alive, I have a career. But at this moment, there's no responsibility that I take more seriously than to keep you, whoever you are, as far away from the exorcist believer as humanly possible. Now normally I use this platform just to, to give my own thoughts on a movie and maybe help you make up your own mind about whether to check it out. But in this video, I'm simply pleading with you all, do not go see this movie. Your money would be better spent wagering on the Jets to win the Super Bowl. It would be better spent donating to Doug Burgum's presidential campaign. You should not give this film or the people who made it a single penny. And after my spooky intro jingle, I'll tell you exactly why. Welcome back everybody, I'm Jake the Scary Story Guy, and today we're going to be ripping the new Exorcist movie a new butthole, which is appropriate because the Exorcist Believer is straight up ass cheeks, guys. It's actually been a good while since the movie made me this angry. I of course really like the original Exorcist movie released back in 1973. It's not necessarily my favorite to watch now, 50 years later, but I at least have a deep appreciation for the, the craftsmanship behind it and the impact that it had on the genre as a whole. So it's not just that the Exorcist Believer is bad on its on its own rights. It certainly is that. But it's bad in a way that both bastardizes and disrespects its excellent predecessor. And I, I just, I, I can't let this stand. I'm sure you've already seen some of the terrible reviews for this. It's currently sitting at a 23% on Rotten Tomatoes, which actually to me seems almost incomprehensibly high. Like what that means is that 23% of movie critics, people who do this for a living, saw this film and concluded that it was at least average. And I'm sorry, you, you have to have your movie critic license revoked for that. I know that's not a thing, but this makes me tempted to run for public office, pass legislation stating that all movie critics must have a license, and when that 23% gets their license, just rip it out of their fucking hands. And just so you know, I'm gonna spoil a lot of this movie while I talk about it. I, I really do intend this video to be a replacement for the movie and not merely an accessory to it. And so, you know, spoiler alert, you've been warned, and if you're one of the poor bastards unfortunate enough to have already seen this movie, uh, as I I am, then I hope you find this video at least entertaining and cathartic. Okay, so The Exorcist Believer takes place in Georgia and it stars Leslie Odom Jr. as a man whose daughter wanders off into the woods one day after school with her friend. The two girls are missing for three full days before inexplicably turning up in a barn 30 miles away and it quickly becomes evident upon their return that these girls are possessed. The parents of these girls become increasingly desperate and end up turning to an Avengers-like squad of approximately 76 different exorcists from a a maximally diverse array of world religions to get Satan hence. Oh, and Ellen Burstyn returns to the franchise as Chris McNeil, the mother from the first Exorcist film, only to be utterly useless and get herself murked five minutes in. Now, I didn't actually hate this movie from the jump. There's a decent setup here, all the stuff about, oh, the girls have gone missing and they've just, they've come back and it's all mysterious. I thought there was some potential there. It's kind of a slow burn at the beginning too, so I'd say it's not until about 45, 50 minutes in that things really start to go off the rails. I can actually pinpoint the exact moment I knew this movie f***ing sucked. Uh, it's when Leslie Odom's character goes to visit Ellen Burstyn's character just to be like, hey, I know you dealt with something like this 50 years ago, can you help me? And he asks her, why didn't you see the exorcism of your daughter actually happen? Why weren't you in the room? To which she replies, and I'm not kidding, because of the damn patriarchy. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. It's definitely not because exorcisms are extremely dangerous and minimizing the number of people in the room minimizes the potential for collateral damage. It's not because you're not a trained or authorized exorcist and would therefore get in the way of the people who actually know what they're doing. And it's absolutely not because the demon will try anything it can to manipulate the people present into doing exactly what it wants. So it's really not a good idea to have an emotionally vulnerable person in there for the exorcism of her own daughter. No, it was definitely because of the patriarchy. I mean, the Catholic Church did cast a literal devil out of your child, but... Uh. They were a little sexist while doing it. Not a great look. But of course, viewing the world through that lens does set us up perfectly for a film in which the climactic exorcism has approximately a thousand people present, most of whom are not experts and have no idea what they're doing. Oh, and by the way, they let the parents in the room too, and one of the parents starts bargaining with the demon, which results in the death of one of the children. Congratulations. I swear to God, it's like this movie just took everything that made the first one great and was like, what if we did the exact opposite of that? And there's actually a mini exorcism scene before that big one, and it's even more cataclysmically stupid if possible. Basically, Ellen Burstyn goes to visit one of the possessed girls and just walks upstairs alone into a room with her. And with no preparation, no forethought, no sobriety, no one there who, who knows what they're doing, she just grabs a cross 
and starts trying to perform an exorcism on this girl. Like, out of nowhere. She, she doesn't know how to do it. She's not speaking Latin. She's not using any official sounding like words. She's just saying the stupidest shit. Like, in the name of every god, in the name of, of all that's holy, by the power of Eckhart Tolle, I command you to depart. At which point the demon gets up, grabs the cross, and stabs Ellen Burstyn's eyes out with it. I'm not kidding. The mom from the first one, the woman who should know better than anyone how serious and dangerous exorcisms are, just tries to perform a slapdash exorcism by herself on a whim and gets her eyeballs stabbed out of her head. And then when she's in the hospital after, all bandaged up, she says to Leslie Odom's character, this isn't your fault. Like, <laughs> no sh of course it's not his fault. Anyone who's smart enough to still have eyes can see that it's yours. And then she says, and th this is a line that's so shockingly witless that it should be a case study in film classes. She says, I've studied exorcisms from all around the world, all different cultures, and you know what every single one of them has in common? People. And she goes on this we are the world spiel about how people go to church to connect with God, yes, but they really go to connect with people. And this, for some indiscernible reason, means that you need to collect exorcists and, and demon hunters from all sorts of religions, like their infinity stones, and bring them in, because you're going to need a lot of people to defeat this thing. And it's like... <laughs> First of all, you haven't exactly covered yourself in glory thus far. I'd probably be more inclined to take your advice if it were opposite day. And second of all, your only first-hand experience with an exorcism was successful, and it was performed by two priests, both Catholic, alone in a room. So what is that? Why are you saying that we like need to recruit Himalayan witch doctors? And from this moment on, all these supporting characters just start pouring out of the woodwork to be like, oh, I'm, I'm friends with a priest. I, I know a minister from wherever. Uh, my my sister-in-law's friends with a lady who once read a Rupi Kaur poem. Maybe they can help. Which is how for the climactic exorcism scene, there must be over a dozen people in the room. And, and half of them are not even doing anything. The other half, there's no rhyme or reason or organization. To, there's no tactics. It's just they're all screaming random shit at the demon to see if anything sticks. And to make matters worse, nothing cool or crazy is happening through any of it. I, I mean, it, one of the things that made the first exorcist so impactful is that the girl, as she's possessed, is doing and saying genuinely distressing stuff. We don't even need to talk about the infamous cross scene. She's whipping her head around 360 degrees. She's projectile vomiting sea green all over the place. Like, this is stuff no one had ever seen before. At one point, she tells the priest about his recently deceased mom, your mother sucks in hell. In this movie, the only crazy stuff that happens is just warmed up leftovers from the original. And the only line that even like tries to approach the aforementioned iconic line is, quote, see you in hell which is a line so flaccid that it wouldn't even raise an eyebrow in a PG-rated movie. I mean, who knew the devil could lose his fastball? It's just so watered down the whole way through. Not even just from the movie that came out 50 years ago. It's watered down from the trailer. In the trailer, there's a line where one of the girls is crying and she says, I don't want to go to hell, which is a great line. Very creepy. And in the movie, she just says, I don't want to die. What the hell? Why would you change that? That's so lame. But perhaps the most insulting scene was right at the very end. Ellen Burstyn's chilling in the hospital, bandages over her eyes, and, oh, by the way, she's been estranged from her daughter, Reagan, for many years. That's just kind of glossed over. But then Linda Blair walks in, the last scene of the movie, like she's Nick f***ing Fury. There's absolutely no explanation for it. No, no setup, nothing the characters did to earn it. It's just painfully obvious that the filmmakers thought this would be a moment where everyone in the theater would just clap like mindless seals. But personally, I have a higher opinion of the movie going public than that. The, the reaction in my theater was certainly less than warm. I counted at least a dozen people just flipping through their phones in the middle of the climactic exercise. Even my wife, who despises horror movies, who, who scares very easily, she leans into me two-thirds of the way through this movie and just whispers, this movie kind of sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, honey, it does. And I only get to show you one horror movie a year, and I'm pissed I blew it on this one. And if all that's not bad enough, this is only the first film of a new Exorcist trilogy. This one's called The Exorcist Believer, the next one will be called The Exorcist Deceiver, and I can only hope that the final installment will be called The Exorcist Underachiever, because that's exactly what the people who made this movie are. I'm gonna give it one star out of five, and I'm gonna close by reminding you that when we willingly fork over our hard-earned money to dog shit like this, the terrorists win. All right, guys, I'll be back to my normal upbeat self in my next video, I promise. I'm not sure what I'm gonna cleanse my palate with yet, but I am gonna be dropping a lot more content than usual this spooky season, so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And in the meantime, thank you for watching this video, and here's hoping you survive to see the next one.